This is Illinois Radio with Biko, Illinois Jones, and Pretty Riot going down right now. Yo, Rick, you did it again, my boy. I am your host, Sorry. Illinois Jones. I got my people up in here. <laughs> I'm your host, Biko. Oh, I'm pretty right. And you know, y'all can always tune in to us every Saturday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. right here on Illinois Radio. Make sure y'all subscribe to Make us sure. on YouTube. Make sure y'all subscribe to us on YouTube and Spotify and iTunes. Anything you can stream music from, you can get us from. You feel we me? We there. We everywhere. <laughs> as as always. <laughs> as always. As, as always. We interview the dopest people in the city, mm. and right now, oh, you we, you messed it up, Jones. I'm sorry. You can't how you gonna stop up. him? I'm um, cause he okay, was supposed well, you to do say. It. You do it. As always, we bring you some of the illest guests from around the city and globe. Mm. That's how we go be. And today we got the homie Young G in a building. <laughs> <laughs> what up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Young G. You know what it is. Man, so this is like a family reunion. Always. Because I interviewed you like 2014, 2016. Now we at 2019. Yeah. I got a beard. Hey, like you got a hey, beard. Hey, I got a beard. Beard game. I got a little song. He got a baby beard. He got a baby beard. We can't talk to him, though. There's only big beard game right here. Last right. night, I ain't even had no yeah, relationship. Right, I'm right. growing up. Hey, <laughs> you feel me? I'm mature. Right. And you feel me? What's been going on, bro? Man, it's all work, man. You already know what it is. All work, no play. Shoot, we got the project coming out uh, in a few days. Uh, new singles, uh, new videos, new business ventures. I mean, we trying to boss up over here, so you know how it is. Man, some next, it's all that. some next level stuff, you know Look, what I'm saying? I stalked your Instagram, mm. you feel me? Mm. You know, after seeing a couple pictures with right. me on there, you know, like, I'm like, oh, he got a picture of me. I liked it, you feel me? <laughs> but then I saw you, like, you've been really on your business. Yeah, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Aside from music, you feel me? Hold on, I can't even jump into this like that mm. because, you know, I know you because mm. we cousins. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the world... That you know, I got a new fan base. And I'm kind of lit. We kind of yeah. lit right over yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. Illinois radio. You, know, you got the new radio station you know I mean? popping. Yeah. I like the new setup. Thank you. You know, thank what I'm you, saying thank you, new, thank the you. new team. Oh yeah, you know these, these, this I is love family. It, I love it. I love it. You feel me? So you know, you know, a lot of people, they, you know, they don't know you like I know you. No, I know Young G. Exactly. You feel me? Yeah. We cousins. You know what I mean? We, even though we supposed to have Thanksgiving yeah. at Chose Spot last year. You know what I mean? New, look, that's what I'm going to tell you about I Miami. What happens in Miami stays conference. in Miami. You don't leave that You feel me? <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to bring them up to right now. You know what I mean? When Young G started rapping and all mm, that good stuff. Where exactly. Young G from and all that. Hey, you feel hey, me? Hey. I want my people to know you like, and so you can be their people yeah. too. You feel me? Yeah, you know, I mean, I've been rapping for the longest, if I ever feel like, but, you know, spent some time, put a few projects out. Um, you already know. For those who don't know, I'm originally from the Bahamas, uh, born and raised, moved here when I was like 17, uh, been living in Chicago since, and uh, pretty much just trying to kill the, the music scene out here in Chicago. I want to know, like, is. how how is it, how was your transition from Nassau, Bahamas to Chicago? Nassau, I'm sorry though. I'm, I'm sorry, thank you. Yes, I'm so sorry. Correction. Nassau, about the correction. Nassau Bahamas. Uh yeah, um, I mean, it was a it was a brutal transformation. Uh but I made, it, I made it. I made it happen. Was it brutal? Yeah. yeah. What was because it? I mean, the weather, the weather oh, wise, yeah. man, like I moved out here. I can move out here with some of my family, but oh, snow, you yeah. know, right? Yeah, in the Bahamas, they you know, yeah, family yeah, in the Bahamas. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Your face got cold so yeah. you the plane. You I had, uh-uh. I had no beard, and then when I got on like all the social media stuff, and my people from back home seeing like the beard, like. What is this? Who is this? Who is this guy? It's Winterfur. Yeah, you know I'm saying so they ain't know who it was, and then you know the beard pretty much just took over and the whole enough of the sense of itself. You know, once you, once the power of the beard cut, look, I didn't just, know it was like whole, this. You know, I didn't even know. You just get a whole different type Damn, of love over here, dangerous. bonding hey, over beard, child. Dangerous. This is dangerous. Yeah, I just want to tell you. You know how many? Yeah, I went you from here, here yeah. to here. Of course. 
probably they didn't know the beer. They probably game. added some some height on you and it, everything. It, I don't know about height. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ratio went from here to here. Yeah. I got more with the beer than I got with the drinks. Of course. Wow. I'm trying to tell exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> wait till your shit, wait till you grow Wait till you grow Wait till you grow <laughs> in. You feel me? You, you know got what? a chin strap hey, right now. I'm finna but cocoa you, butt, cocoa, you, coconut oil. This hey, down then. Jamaican castor oil. oil. You hey, about to say, if yeah, not, you might want to go downtown to get you with right. your girl. Hey. You feel me? <laughs> and do with this side. Don't cut But up. anyway. I'm not pouring you another drink. Oh, oh, look, man. I don't need no more drink, man. I got my boy young. Like I said, this is like family having yeah, family yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Um, okay, let me get professional. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <sighs> what were we? You got to talk so, about how we did the interview, but how we set the interview up, though, because that was funny as hell. So, I, so so we set it up to where it's like, he doing. I see him doing this little, the new thing over here, the new setup, the new team. I was like, dang. Cuz I can't get on the show, cuz he's like, I was like you didn't turn Hollywood on me like that, cuz you can't. I can't get an invite to the show. He's like, he took a little time. You know, say I see a little dot dot dot, little dot dot for like fifteen minutes. All right, <laughs> the man go go to my page. He's like, what you mean Hollywood? You over here with the da 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 Instagram followers, right, and you, you over here case. shooting the da 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 videos in LA. You out here dropping da da. I'm like, wow, that's yeah. how we are. Yeah. Cause you got to call me Hollywood. <laughs> man, I got over a hundred thousand no. followers. <laughs> Right, yeah. he got a K behind uh, his uh, number. Uh, My brother. That was too funny. Got the Cartier man. frames, the Look, nice neck pieces. He got a picture with uh, favorite basketball nah, player on his on, Instagram. Man. I ain't even get invited to that dinner. <laughs> that was funny. You feel me? I ain't so get invited to that dinner. Shout out Damian Lillard. We went four, o- we four overtimes and still won that thing nah. last night. You feel me? Yeah, I ain't even got the address to the barber shop, but that's, that's a whole <laughs> yeah. other story. Oh, speaking hey. on, on, on barber. Hey. I, um, hey. So you started, you found your love for music yes, at sir. the age of 17. <laughs> what um, was the motivation behind you actually, you know, finding music? Well, pretty much um, a lot of the guys I was hanging out with at the time, friends, um, they were producers, musicians as well. Like, I was just kind of like hanging out in the studio with them in the cut, you know what I'm saying, listen to while they rapping and, and writing. And <clears throat> I'm like, all right, man, I ain't doing nothing. You just write some stuff, and, you know. I went to the crib, and, you know, I got a Mac and... The, 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 the headphones like you a telemarketer or whatever you know what I'm <laughs> you got the video game <laughs> joints yeah, you feel me that was back then so you know I record my own stuff by myself and came out dope and just pretty much went from there man and so you learned on your own yeah pretty oh, much wow. and then I mean I just pretty much always been like the, the record head man like I always I, from all the records I've ever done I recorded myself <clears throat> um, take them to the studio to get mixed mastered and you know, just learned the proper way to have, you know, your records sound t- tip top. And, you know, I've always been like the competitive dude to where I need my record to sound like every, not like, quali- not like, Industry. sound, yeah, like just qu- just the quality wise, the quality of records. Like, I'm not in a $100,000, million dollar studios. I don't got the $100,000 mics, but, you know what I'm saying? A lot of it nowadays is digital. So, you know, I just want my stuff to sound. You know, up there with the people who do have those resources and have those type of, you know, the, the money to put behind their stuff like that. So it's always been like, I always wanted my stuff to always sound like tip top, and then it just got, it just became an obsession too. Like mm-hmm. I always want my stuff to sound and look the quality of the industry right now. So, so you pretty much you pay heavy and close attention. Of course. Uh, what's a what's a studio session like with Young G? Like, how do you prepare and get things? But well, like I said, man, I, I record myself <clears throat> a lot of my things at my home. I, I got a studio set up in my house, mm-hmm. so I record all my things on my own. And then when I set up in uh, studio time to get everything mixed and mastered, so I'm pretty much in there by myself. I know the the process. People be in the studio with all their friends and mm-hmm. a lot of gay and chicks and shit. But you know, I like to be locked in because I know. From when I recorded it, <clears throat> I know how I want it to sound when I get it mixed and mastered so I can relay that over to the engineer and then let him know so he could pretty much get the same vibe that I was feeling when I created it when I play it back to him mm-hmm. and he gets get to mixing the master and stuff. Shout out my boy Jabari over there at uh, Soundscape. So he's one of my uh, 
engineers. Shout out to my boy Mix, J Mix. He's uh, a lot of he does. He, excuse me. He produces a lot of the uh, records that I make nowadays. And shout out my boy Oz. You know what I'm saying? He's two of my closest friends and good producers. So, you know, when you actually record at home, do you feel like you may be missing out on you know I guess key networking at a studio? Sometimes, but a lot of sessions be people be you know. And they're with their kind of like close friends and, you know, people they kind of locked in with already. So, oh, my bad. No, you good. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I do like to, to network with other people as well. You know, I do feel like I do miss out on some of that stuff. But uh, at the same time, I'm chasing, you know, that. What's the word? You grind. No, nah, not really the grind. It's like I'm chasing. um just that level, that quality level, you know what I'm saying? And when you get a lot of people in the studio, it's like a lot of people giving you their ideas opposed from what you think. I want you know, my, my music to be, you know, it's 100% me, what I'm, what I'm doing and what I'm, what I'm trying to get across in that song. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, when you got a lot of people telling you what to do here and telling you what to do here, it kind of becomes... Their song. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It, t- it yeah. throws you off. Yeah. So then I get to, you know what I'm saying, they want me to sound like this artist. Oh, well, you got to throw it ad lib like... Oh, this this guy or oh, this guy. So then you get to sound like you know a like, bunch of different other artists opposed yeah. from sounding mm-hmm. like your authentic self. So I know you, know you just said you record by yourself, but do you have like a team of people that you you will accept that <coughs> input from just because they know oh, yeah, you yeah, and yeah, your yeah. style? Of course, like like I said, my engineers who I'm in there, I'm, I'm locking with them, so I, I allow my engineers to <coughs> give their input as well. You see what I'm saying, like. Just how they're, just like how I'm an artist, uh-huh. and this is my art. They're engineers and they're artists as well, and they do what they do behind the boards. You know what I'm saying? Just like how a videographer, I can tell a videographer how I want my, how I want my video to look, but he knows how to shoot. He knows how he's editing, so he knows pretty much a lot of stuff that I don't know. Mm-hmm. So I could be like, man, I want it to look like this, that, and the third, but he knows a little bit better because he does this. Right, and your idea engineer, with his yeah, idea. Yeah, so it's like a it's like a collective. A lot of people start. I, I take a lot of people uh, creative uh, advice. Yeah, advice. One thing I respect about you is, <clears throat> you know, in a time where when we, when we first met, it wasn't like social media wasn't as big as it is today. Right. So like a lot of artists who was just starting at that time uh-huh. when we first got together. And even a lot of radio people start doing some weird sh- on the internet to get to a higher place or a higher level. Yeah. One thing I respect about you, you never re- you never did that. You know what I mean? You stayed you, you stayed in your own lane. Yeah. You ain't try to make music to sound like yeah. all the music on the radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stayed in your own lane. What keep you grounded into doing what you feel is best for G? Well, I mean, I kind of know exactly what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> Or where I see myself going in the next few years, or you know, what I'm saying like, you know how you want to run the race. You train for it, and you just pretty much you just on your way to the finish line. Right. So you know, I pace myself, and then <laughs> I pretty much know how I'm trying to go. So I don't, I don't get off course and get off track, and you know, what I'm saying because from the first track you ever I ever heard from you to now, it's like. You know what I mean? I hear, I hear, I hear the growth, but yeah. it's also still it's a Young G track. Right, right. I right, feel right. the energy from Young G. Yeah, you feel me? So I just want to applaud you on that. Thank man. you, sir. You yeah, know, as, as, as a cousin, as a cousin. Yeah, you already you know, know man. Yeah. I'm gonna drink to that. You gonna drink to that with me? <laughs> take it. Yeah, yeah, take it. Come on, we'll take it. Sit with you. Now we got a, a record from you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's I love it. Mm. Break down I love it, and we gonna spin that joint. Well, I love it is a. Uh, very unique record. Uh, shout out my boy Finn, Finny on the hook. Um, he laid the vocals down. Got the idea for it. I, I sent it over to him, and we created a created a dope record. Uh, <clears throat> we shot a video for it too. You know, check it out on you. Check that out on YouTube. Um, but yeah, the, the record is kind of like a. It has like a Caribbean feel to it. You know, what I'm saying that's where I'm from, and I try to always not always, but I try to like implement that in all of my most of my music so that you know just so people could feel me from where I'm from and who I am not just you know a Chicago artist but where I'm exactly where, where I'm from and you know where I originate from so I mean I grew up listening to reggae so you know 
hip hop ain't really came in. I mean, I, I listened to hip hop growing up, but reggae was pretty much mainly what mm-hmm. I grew up listening to, being from the from the Bahamas, and then you know artists like Bob Marley, Red Rat, Beanie Man, Buju Bantan, and stuff like that. So people we don't even know about exactly. So <laughs> uh, so listening to that, and I feel like it's just a part of of who I am. And I tried to. I mean, in the early in early stages, I wasn't bringing that forth. But now I'm trying to. I, I'm finding ways of how I can, you know, bring them both. Yeah, together. yeah. bond them together. Bond yeah. them together and make a dope bracket out of it. I hear that. We finna hey. actually get into. I yeah. love it. Right here, right now, Illinois via Logic Radio. Don't go nowhere. We will be right back with the homie Young G. Make sure to check out the Illist playlist in which we provide you with the latest tracks we play live on our show. Head over to Spotify and search Illinois Radio to follow our playlist as well as follow our podcast. Now let's get back to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in to Illinois Radio every Saturday <laughs> from 4 to 6 p.m. Make sure you subscribe to us on your favorite streaming service, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud. Also, if you're watching our video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell so that whenever we post our videos, you get a notification because why would you want to miss anything that's going on here on Illinois Radio. You feel me? All right, so we're going to hop back into this interview with Young G. Uh, you feeling good? Uh, uh, I'm decent. I, I, guess that's a, <laughs> I guess that's good. Okay, so right before the break, we listened to your song, I Love It. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. Okay, I like that song. Sure. I like that song a lot. Sure. One thing I really like about the song, you spoke about the Caribbean vibes to it. I do have a question. Do you feel like a type of way when you see people try to imitate the Caribbean sound and it's like apparently like this is not what our music really sounds like? Right. Uh, sometimes when they portray it the correct way and when it's a dope song, you can't really hate on it. Uh, other times it's like you can tell when people like just chasing the fucking, I mean, chasing the, Chasing the fad, mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I mean, like, time, sometimes I take it as slattery, man. Like, <clears throat> for example, like when Drake did the whole one dance thing, amazing song. I love that song. And so That's many like people were so songs. mad that he did that. And I actually yeah. really liked that song. Yeah. I, I mean, like one of my yeah. favorite yeah. Drake songs. And I was upset that he made such a good song. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so good. Yeah, that was like, it pissed me off. I had it on repeat for like two days. But it was it was an amazing song. Um, like I would say about Dre, he, he does all this stuff co- the correct way. Even though like people would be like, man, he he be jumping on everybody's joints and stealing everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I, but you he, think he do it the correct way? You think Rihanna played a part within that though? You know, at the time that they were talking. Um, it was a it was an artist on there, Wiz Kid. He's pretty big. No, I was saying like in general with Drake changing, you know, um, entering the Caribbean lane. Well, I feel lane. like uh, Toronto has that. Has that wave as well, because a lot of people from like overseas mm-hmm. migrate there. So he, I think, a lot of people in his camp, uh, pretty much got that wave. That makes sense. I didn't you even think about yeah. that. Yeah, that makes so sense. a lot of sense. A big festival in August. A, yeah. a big festival, like a Caribbean fest, right? In August. Is it here? No, it's in Toronto. No, it's in Toronto. Oh, we ain't, we well, ain't. I mean, they got like uh, they got. If I'm not mistaken, Carabano or something like that. Yeah, like they, so I, yeah, it's like, it's like a carnival type of type of vibe for them. Have you witnessed so a car? I mean, that may be a dumb question, but like, oh. what's the actual experience of carnival? Like, like, have you actually witnessed one of those? Carnival is pretty much kind of like our 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 version of carnival is called Junkanoo. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have another song, pretty much uh, along the Junkanoo lines um, on one of my other projects. But yeah, uh, our carnival is pretty much like a big festival where people just, it's a cultural vibe, colors, uh, costumes, it's just its just a whole, it's a different experience. You gotta, you would have to witness, I couldn't even explain it to you, you know what I'm saying, you would have to see it. But yeah, it's a different vibe. Yeah, I actually want to jump into, um, you know, your craft on a barber side. Okay. When, you know, like when did you find a passion to be a dope barber, my brother? Well, what that's is it, a long what did it story. come from? Um, I've been cutting hair for almost like 15 years now. Um, messing around in the streets out there in the Bahamas. And then, like, one of my friends, he used to cut hair. And just kind of, like, to keep me, you know what I'm saying, out of trouble, he told the owner of that shop that I knew how to cut hair, which was a lie. So I learned how to cut in a, in a barber shop in the Bahamas. Then moved out here. When I moved out here at 17, um... <clears throat> 
went to high school, finished, and went straight from high school out of when I graduated, um, went to Barber College because I was cutting hair in my basement, side hustle. Don't um, say that. <clears throat> Sam, Sam, come out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I was, I was. It was for free. It was for okay. free. It was free. It was free. None paid. Well, it, it was <laughs> none, none <laughs> for profit. <laughs> none for profit. <laughs> but no, nah, I mean, I was, yeah, I was cutting hair in the basement. Then um, went to Barber College, graduated, and uh, been cutting hair ever since. And just pretty much, that was pretty much funding a lot of my music stuff. Wow. So just pretty much just cutting hair ever since. And putting most of, I would say like seventy five percent of the money, into like bettering my craft, my equipment, uh, videos, uh, studio time. Man, you got clientele, so, my brother. Do you feel like so, I, I like, mean I was seven okay. days a week in that thing? How many so, lines you pushed back before? <laughs> you I'm you? dead. Oh, I, I messed up a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. I messed up a lot of people. But they still that rock made, with you, though. Yeah, but that 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 made you better. That, yeah, that made yeah. you better. That's, that's like that's like you know what I'm saying like you saying you got on your first record and then you made a hit. Like that's the lie. True. That's a lie. Mm. The lie much, to take the test. You term. you pretty much made some trash records until you know it just honed your skills. You know what I'm saying, and it just made you that much better and go that much harder because you know you just you once you dedicated to something, you know it's, it's it's just gonna get better the more time and effort you put into it. Right. So you went from <coughs> being just the barber to now owning, mm-hmm. owning. Yeah. Like how did you, you went from the chair yeah. to like now you collecting? Yeah. Um, just hustling, man. Just grinding. You know, we we did a whole lot to get the shop that we have right now, man. We went through the trenches, went through a lot of obstacles, um, but now we, we we here. We got the paperwork right. You know, we got the shop in one of the best locations. Shout out my boys out there. They're working right now. Um, Platinum Phase Bridgeport. Where is that? Like, it, put the yeah, address let it, out let there. Let people know. <laughs> 34, 37 South Halstead. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my boys, Platinum Phase Bridgeport. On the real. Yeah. So, so what's so <laughs> like? What's the things that you had to learn from the difference from being just a barber, the politics from being a, just a barber to now the owner? Well, it was a transition, but as I was cutting hair at somebody else's shop, I was pretty much like managing the whole time. So I was doing everything that I do now besides like paying the bills. Right. But now it's like I do everything and pay the bills. Did, did, did but I was a- I was higher I mean I was hiring, firing, you know, I'm cleaning, helping clean and making sure everything going correctly and, you know, opening the shop and locking it up at the end of the night and, you know, I pretty much what I do now and um what I do now is pretty much that. And more and and pay the bills. Is that the same? Like like is that a balance with with the same thing you do in music? Like yeah. Like as managing your own time, your studio <laughs> time, your video time. Like is that the same? Like yeah. how do you balance both? Of, like well, I help? do I do all of it. I I do the same. I, mean, I don't have no management team. Right. Anything, but we we did just launch the label, uh, the independent record label, Illustrious Visions, and you know I have some help with that. You know. Um, my girl Savage, she does a thing, you know, my lady, and uh, she pretty much anything I need, she pretty much helped me out with. Like with the, with you know, you owning a business, how have you utilized that knowledge towards your music career? Well, my music hustle helped my barber career. Oh, so it's opposite. <laughs> Can I ask a question before we go any further? Go ahead, ask okay, your question. Okay, because Jesus, I did you, cut you yeah, off. Yeah, like I'm, I'm sorry. like. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like double dutch right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let, me, let me finish so, that real quick while I'm while I'm right okay. here. Okay. But like I said, the my 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 music helped my barber stuff because you know we was we was in it to where <clears throat> we were going on uh, 150 and Gorilla Market. I'm um, handing out flyers everywhere, uh, trying to pop with every club and putting flyers on people's cars and. I mean, putting CDs on people's cars and, you know, all of that. So I just pretty much took that same formula to my to my business, which was, like, a little bit easier because it's, like, with music, you have to try to reach everyone in the world. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Especially, like, the Internet, you have to make sure your target market, you try to, like, target your target market. But, like, with a business, I'm in one set location. So then I only have to worry about the, area around the perimeter yeah. around my business within maybe, like, a 5, 10, maybe 15 at that mile radius. So now I'm like, and on top of that, I have the team. Uh, I don't have to go and look for a team to help me with my music stuff because then I have like barbers who work at the shop so that I have a team. And if you want to become better and you want to make money, so now you have to come and help me to make the shop pop. Right. 
in order for you to make money. Right. So now I have a, a team of, of people who's helping me in this 10, 15 yeah. mile radius. All right, let's go out. Let's do this. If, in order for us to make this joint pop, we're gonna you you take this uh, you take this area you take this area and we just seven o'clock in the morning. You know we out here at the CTA and we handing out flyers to them, making sure they come to the shop and then pretty much go from there. Man. That's dope. And that was just like, and that's on a smaller scale to where I feel like as a music, because the music is like you got to reach. I gotta reach everybody in LA. I gotta mm-hmm. try to reach everybody in my. You got an infinity mile radius. <laughs> infinity yeah, mile. Wow. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to get next to Tayoshi. Yeah. Yeah. Tayoshi yeah. is the music manager. But what I'm saying is like with with the shop, you don't gotta worry about. I don't gotta worry about people overseas because they not they not gonna really like come yeah, to the they shop. They gotta see it. Them. They can still see it via uh, in, in, the internet, Instagram, website, all of that stuff, but. The really the people I need to target is the people I can really touch. Right. right. The people I can really see, you know what I'm saying, get, get in contact with that close. So it's that much easier to me. So, I mean, I, we didn't street team it up. All the businesses in the neighborhood left thousands of flyers, left. I feel like a proud You know what I'm saying? Right like, right I feel like I'm a proud cousin. So, cousin right here, so I mean, that was, that was that. I mean, so the biz, I mean, the, the music pretty much helped that. Because, I mean, I was doing it for so long and, Going to clubs and you know in the in the parking lot trying to pass it out. Going to the Bulls games and putting uh, flyers and CDs and giving out flyers and CDs to people at the Bulls games and going to concerts and that's dope. Okay, so I kind of want to just go back just a little bit. So while you were speaking about how when you first started hair cutting cutting hair you said that you know cutting hair was really fueling the music business for you do you feel like it's important for upcoming artists to have like some type of side hustle because I think it's common now that a lot of artists are doing this starving artist thing and it's like they're really struggling and I feel like it takes away from their music so now being in a position that you are an entrepreneur do you feel like it's important for upcoming artists to have a side hustle to really fuel them whether it be a real job or like an actual side hustle well I feel like in order to be successful you have to really believe in yourself and then have some type of funding and if you don't have any funding then how are you going to fund your dream so that means you're going to be looking for handouts from other people so I feel like you always got to have some type of income to make anything happen for you you know what I'm saying even with the internet stuff like they request require you to pay little little this little that every year every now and again to post your music on certain platforms and Stuff like that. So I feel like you always got to have some type of income. It's like you could do the starving artist stuff, but then. You feel like that's a way yeah, to like, go? Yeah, but like who's going to pay for the studio time? Right. Who's going to pay for the mixing, the mastering, the stuff like that? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The travels, so, the. Don't quit your you day job. Like, <laughs> okay. You, don't quit your day okay. job. You know what I'm saying? You always got to have some type of <laughs> income to where it's going to fund what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? Believe, yeah. You just can't you make music for free, it's, especially quality music. You know what I'm saying? Like you could make it out out of your crib, but you'll be back with your How mama. Good is it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? People want. I feel like you gotta really. Hustle. Yeah, man. What's your? Like, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. Nah, you good? Because we we kind of we man. running low on time. Yeah, you good? Um, <laughs> what's your vision behind Illustrious Visions Music Group? I mean, like you guys gotta have that vision. It's just that vision uh, to become great. Just that vision to become the next thing. You know what I'm saying? And it's just illustrious. I always have. It's always. It's always been a illustrious family. But like now we got the with the label, so I feel like you guys gotta have that vision too. You gotta foresee things before they even happen. Like you gotta make it come to fruition. What you think? Like that's just a dream. That's that's what your dream is. You know what I'm saying? Just a vision. Like you have to see it before it can actually come to pass. Like people don't just slip and fall into you know what I'm saying what they want to become like you got to actually see yourself yep. as that before you become that and you got to have that vision I feel that uh, is, is, are you the only artist right now under currently yes I am the only artist are you looking illustrious visions I mean I feel like I, I'm not in a position right now financially to fund other artists so until we get that bag coming in you know but I do I do any any artist that had any uh <clears throat> They need any help, any insight, uh, any questions, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm willing to work with a lot of artists, um, and I don't even, like, be taxing. Anytime I, like, try to work with other artists, it's like, 
out of love, you know what I'm saying? Like, I work with a lot of, like, my homies and uh, whatever. Anything they need, I let them know whatever I can help with, just ask. You know what I'm saying? You, have a, you got a genuine heart. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, but that's yeah. what, what helped lead you to grow. Yeah, yeah. You definitely got to, like, keep relationships open and, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the only way people grow, like... I feel like a lot of people out here just trying to worry about themselves and just trying to climb that ladder. And then everybody's so worried about self. And I was just having this conversation with somebody else. Um, I feel like a lot of artists just worry about climbing to the top themselves, opposed from, like, hey, if I help the next man come up, he might be a little bit far gone than I am. If I can help him up, he might be able to pull me to the top with him later on. So opposed from trying to step on somebody, I feel like it's like a crab in a bucket effect. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We talk like, about that a lot. Yeah. yeah. A so lot. you why, like why are you <laughs> trying to pull the other artists down to get to the top when you know what I'm saying? Why we could just work together. Everybody could build and, a ladder yeah. and all yeah. climb up at the yeah. same time. Yeah. <laughs> about this bucket. Yeah. Man, oh man. Um, I know project wise, you say you have an upcoming project. Yeah, we have an upcoming project um, mixtape coming up called uh, Gyal Ting. It's uh, say it again. Gyal Ting. What that mean? Gyal is, is is a Caribbean term for girl. Oh, like how people be like Tinks. You know the, the Caribbean. I mean the Canadian things. Drake and them. They be like, oh, let me, caught a couple of Tinks coming true. But pretty much like when I was in the Bahamas in the Caribbean. Uh, Tinks, another word for Tinks is a ger- as a girl is a gal. You know what I'm saying? So gal Tinks. So pretty much the project is pretty much like a lot of songs. I think females might for the ladies. Yeah, I'm an easy gravitate. Yeah. I'm, hey, I love, I love it. It's right. summertime. Yeah, but it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of turn up records on there as well. So a lot of chicks can you know have fun like you know it's a lot of, some emotional records on there as well. But you know it's like a it's a nice body of work. Check them. Yeah. You so, be yeah, good when they call it a so body the whole thing is called mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole thing is called gal thing. You know it's you know it's gonna be good when he say he don't go to the studio. He putting that time in at home. That means uh, no he distractions. Yeah. Why, yeah. Well, he gal thing. Yeah. That title alone, <laughs> yeah. y'all listen to gal thing. Yeah, he just happy he could say yeah. it. That's all. <laughs> right. That's what he can say that. It's all yeah. good. Yeah. Man, it's a whole heap of trouble, man. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, again, uh, let people know where they can find you. Um, Social media wise Shout outs and things of that nature Yeah Shout out Illustrious Vision man You know Everybody who helped out with the team Shout out V V in the cut always Um, The whole team man Everybody who helped with the project My boy J Mix My boy OZ I got Seasick on the project Um, Man Everybody who helped the grind man Everybody all the fans Everybody who listen Everybody who stream Do we got a date? Hey Yeah It's drop uh, May 6th May 6th. Oh. Yeah. May 6th. May 6th. So I May came six. here. Yeah. Say it again. I May 6th. May 6th. May 6th. Everywhere? Six, is it, will it be streaming yeah, everywhere? Every, every, all platforms. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. Everywhere. everywhere. I'm not even finna try to pronounce it. Say it for me, Joe. Y'all team. Y'all team. May 6th. Just too wine for me, mama. Hey. You know what I'm Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, we. we <laughs> Wong, Wong. Wong, Wong. Why you. Hey, I'm so sorry. Y'all crazy. Shout out to everybody that tuned in. Yeah.